went to. It, I surely did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find out, other than that, we didn't like each other much. <laughs> but we had a lot of kids. <laughs> so we had five kids, but it, 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 and, um, it ended up in a divorce. So if you look at, if you look at uh, success or, or in failure, if you look at getting married to the girl that you think is the most beautiful, sexiest girl in the whole class, then that seems like success. And then later you have five children and you get a divorce. It seems like failure. But I can't tell one from the other anymore mm. because five of the people I love most in my life came from that marriage. So really it was not. It, didn't, it, I can't, it was meant to be. I, I can't look at it as failure. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell anymore if I'm winning or losing or what's success and what's failure because... It gets turned around. But you just keep playing the game. Just head for my dreams. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it's all about, which yeah. is the other thing that we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to take a little break and uh-huh. let you breathe a little bit. You're a nice girl. Because I'm going to ask nice some more really tough questions. All right. I'm, okay. I'm up to it. Okay. Be, yeah. But it's not going to be a long break. How it's, short? It, why? Do you have to go to the bathroom? No. Do you need a drink of water or anything? No. You're okay? I'm good. You're just going to sit there? I'm just, I guess. Okay, well, then you can join the conversation. So we have this sponsor, and they're on, if you go straight up um, 3rd Street, they're on the corner of 3rd and Johnson. And this this guy makes everything fresh, like he makes gazpachos. Do you know what that is? No. It's a Mexican soup, and it's a cold summer soup, and it's made with all stuff that you grow in your garden. A uh, habanero, a tomato, cucumbers, garlic, onion, and it's splendid, my friend. He makes that fresh every day, and it just tastes like summer. Oh, wow. It's really good. I'm going to have to bring you some someday. Yes. And um, he makes really good Burgers like he has a turkey burger that's wonderful. Yeah, one of my friends last week had the black bean and sweet potato burger, and said that that was really good. And I hear that his lasagna is excellent. I have not had that. He makes pot pies, cooks the chicken, does the vegetable thing, makes the crust. And lines them the little things. Oh, I'm telling you, it's really good. He has a thing called take and bake so that you can call and say, I'd like to pick up one of these meals for dinner tonight for three people. So this week it's whitefish, barley, and vegetable um, includes a salad and a bread. Pork carnitas is pork loin, slow cooked in traditional Mexican spices, ready to be warmed in your own oven. Comes with Spanish rice tortillas, black bean, corn salsa that he makes there, lettuce and tomato, and includes salad and bread. Service for two, seventeen ninety five. I don't know that you could make that meal for that much with all those ingredients. And then we have the chicken pot pies. So I, I want to tell you about this because his name is Paul, and he's just getting into our community and getting to meet people. He just made his first appearance at an event that we were at last week called Power of the Purse, and his food was wonderful. So check him out. Go there and check him out. And he always has farm farm produce brought in right from the farmers. There, He has sprouts. He has stuff that you don't find around here. And I want you to go check him out and tell him that the diva sent you. He bakes croissants during the day, and you walk in and you smell that. <laughs> it's really good. So go check Paul out. You can get a quart of gazpacho for nine ninety five. You can take it for lunch all week, and it's very filling. So please go talk to him. His number is 989-971-1456. The address is 1023 North Johnson in Bay City. His hours are Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 630, and Saturdays, 9 to 4. That's 3rd and Johnson Market and Eatery. Find them on Facebook and Instagram. And go see Paul and tell him that the diva sent you. Go get lunch for your whole office one day and surprise them. It's really good, nummy, healthy, healthy food. There you go.
That's Paul at Third and Johnson. So we're visiting with um, a, a really man. I I consider it an honor to know you. I really do. Well, it's and I'm so glad that I took that class. And it's one of those things that I just needed some continuing ed for my uh, coaching. And I was kind of looking around and there on Facebook was something local in person. I didn't have to do it online. And I thought, oh, that's going to be even more fun because sometimes you get tired of doing things online. And you have a whole theory about what the Internet and phones and everything is doing to our um, skills as entrepreneurs, as networkers. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Well, I I think the cell phone is a wonderful device for communication, and I think the missing is trust. And uh, you could spend a lot of time communicating with somebody from a different state. When it comes down to making the deal or send me 50 grand, we'll get the show on the road, you probably won't because trust pretty much comes eye to eye. And so that's a missing. Now, once you have that trust, it's a wonderful device to communicate with, and there's so many ways you can communicate on it. But I think the missing is trust. And the other missing is the, it has everything on the Internet. You can ask it anything and get an answer. The, the other thing I see missing is the, applica- the, the application of knowledge com- comes from each other. You know, you've got to kind of have people in your life that encourage you and people that at least show you it can be done, you know, that you've seen it. So it kind of it kind of comes from each other, and that's usually done through networking. Well, the traditional networking is difficult today. Everybody today is kind of a dead run. They got a couple of kids, one under their arm, and one in dance, and one in hockey. And, <laughs> you know, they're they are both two career persons, or in the family, both of them are professionals, and it becomes very, very difficult to use traditional, like the Qantas Club and the Rotary Club, and all the ways that were set up for years for networking is kind of missing. So I think that networking, to me, is in its simplest form, is you got to know something. You got to let other people know you know it, or you don't have opportunity. And I think that's that, exactly right. That just sums it up right there. That's kind of a simplification. Of it. But it, why say more? <laughs> okay. I mean, you can keep going, but I'm just saying that you summed up networking perfectly. Yeah. So I think that people know they need to network. It's just finding it difficult. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying to set up a club that caters to this lifestyle that means a lot of it has to be at random because people got to come coffee shops are popular because it's a random you can come and go you can have meetings there and you're not on a given schedule you can do it in you got one kid on your arm one in hockey you can run over (laughs) the coffee shop meet some other ladies that are doing the same thing or guys whatever but the 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 lifestyle is so different so i think we need to create better ways to network in today's world because we're on a dead run and it's not just the very young it's caught us all it you know, has uh, it? we don't have a lot of free time and you know with all this technology you think it buys free time but it doesn't doesn't do it we've become its slave instead of the other way around huh? I, yeah i think so so i think it can be done though i think we can create a way to network um for for the lifestyle of today and so it, and it can in, it can incorporate many different things, like the quick meeting in the coffee shop, a brief conversation yes. on Facebook, reading each other's Facebook pages. You know, just today something happened where this one woman that I know was complaining about, about migraines, and one of my friends who also advertises with us takes these supplements called. Um, See that orange box there? <laughs> she takes those. And I can't think, why can't I think of the name of that? Zingular, thank you. She's been taking the Zingular. She had migraines for years and years and years, and she's been migraine free well, for almost, it's been years now. Yeah. And, and so I said, call Brenda. And it, had I not taken the time to get to know her, and why she takes all these supplements, I would not have known that. 
That's, ex- that's networking. That's networking. And I think the, you know, I'm, a, I'm on the board of directors of Saginaw Club. And the, the Saginaw Club in its heyday was really hard to get into. It took you two, three years. But they, it was mostly people already made it. And they, they got under each other. You know, they, they, it was in everybody else's best interest that the other members succeeded as well. And so if they heard anything or they knew anything, they would bring that or they knew anybody that would make a difference in your life. And I think that's kind of faded away, and we need that back in a different form because uh, right now what, what I'm going after is people on their way up, people building their careers and people that are professional people on their way up. And the club has in the past not catered to that, but we are now. And they guffawed at your idea when you first presented it, right? Yeah, it did go well. <laughs> <laughs> and and now they've embraced it. Yeah, now so far, and um, now I have to get enough members in to make a difference. So it's coming. I'm going after you as well. <laughs> Good. I'm just trying to figure out how I'll fit it in because I want to be an active part of it. Yeah. So I'll figure it out. Okay. So so redefining networking is kind of one of your things. Yeah, I think there's a need for it. I think that uh, a community thrives on it, on networking. You know, we know we hear somebody's hiring, we tell our friends. Right. We, we have some way to help each other out and get under each other and make life better for everybody. Right. And because we got so busy, we kind of don't go there. But I think there's a way, even if we're busy, people will find some time, if, they, if it's random enough, if they can come and go as they, as they have time for, right. they can make time for. Hmm, that's pretty. That's a pretty good idea. You know, are you on LinkedIn at all? Do you know what that is? Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. You are. I saw your picture on there. <laughs> and I find a lot of people on that. And that's kind of a, a good networking tool to meet people that you wouldn't otherwise meet. Yes. And a lot of people that I meet are from this area. And I would not have found them. Had it not been, because I wouldn't go on the white pages or yellow pages and look for that. And yet, there they are, my friend on there. So I bother getting to know them. Now, maybe some people have mastered the trust in those programs. I have not. Uh, You know, I I get to talk to them through this media, and it's... uh, it's almost like storybook characters rather than a real uh, person. Right. So you have to take it that extra step. To meet them. And meet them in person. Yeah. Right. I agree with that. Yeah, because then you get to ask some questions. And then if you stay top of mind when you're talking to somebody else, just like that happened today with that headache, had Brenda not said that to me a few times, I wouldn't have thought to right. to refer. So you have to know each other. Yeah, and I think the more people you know in a community, the bigger bigger your network, the more successful you will be. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're not moving fast enough, just let me just mention that I can't remember who it says just expand your network. Oh, oh, that's really good. Yes. Yeah, I need to come up with that. I heard that. That's good though. <laughs> you repeated it though. Yeah. So that's cool. So another thing that you said that I thought was very profound was believe it's possible what does that do for you if you believe something's possible how does that change well it's uh, it's an intangible statement it's believing something could take place in the future that that isn't there now that that you have dreams that's what i define a dream a dream is a vague notion you don't know how to get there but you can believe it can take place in the future you believe it's possible to do and i think that I have many dreams, and to me, dreams are are my only base of decision making. It's always, I think, there's two things that influence the present. It's either it's either going to be the past or the future. When you get in the past, you're kind of about the business of trying not to lose because you're saying, "I made these mistakes. I don't want to make them again," and that's guiding your life. Where if you have dreams, it's the future that you look to, and uh, so the. The, it changes that dynamic. So the the if 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 you want, for example, the company I'm, I'm I own, I'm trying to grow at twenty five percent a year, and have been for a long time now. So the dream is to is really to have endless opportunity 
for anybody that works there. 